magic school bus. Hey, hey, magic school bus, the producer speaking. You have a question. I just watched your show on cold-blooded animals, and do you really expect us to believe that there's such a thing as a spa for reptiles? Oh, no, of course not. We just made it up so we can show what it's like to be cold-blooded. Does being cold-blooded mean reptiles are always cold? <laughs> no, not at all. It just means that they move from place to place to warm up or cool down. Not that they're cold all the time or that they have cold blood. And all of the Herb's Haven staff are trained professionals, and you'd never do to reptiles what they did. It'd be too dangerous. Amphibians like frogs and toads, as well as fish and insects, are also cold-blooded. Now, believe it or not, mammals and birds are the only animals that keep warm from within. Do all reptiles do things like look for shade and sunlight to keep themselves at the right temperature? They have to. While they can tell when their temperature is getting too hot or too cold, they don't have an automatic heating or cooling system inside like we do. I get it. When it gets colder or warmer outside, cold-blooded creatures get colder or warmer inside. <laughs> Spoken like a true herp lover. But what happens if they get too cold or too hot? Ah, good question. Normally, reptiles try to avoid getting into that situation. Now, if for some reason it gets too cold around them and they can't move to a warmer place, they might bury themselves under leaves or find shelter underground, kind of like hibernating. I see. So what about Liz? First of all, you have to remember that Liz is a magical lizard. Second of all, she'll do anything she can to make her life easier and more comfortable. So if I know Liz, she'll do everything possible to add a warm-blooded lifestyle to her cold-blooded life. And as Miss Frizzle said, nothing makes a herp as happy as when the temperature's just right. Mm -hmm.